Well, I'm hoping I get to do a test that I've been wanting to do for a while with my Ionic 6. I am in the United States and this is the limited edition with the great big honking wheels that cut something like 50 miles off of your range per charge. So what I'm going to do today is do a test, give or take 150 miles and drive around mostly at highway speeds and I will go with the flow of traffic and uh, see what kind of range we get, what kind of performance we get and then hopefully very soon in a few days I'm gonna have some 18 inch wheels and fuel efficient tires, lower rolling resistance tires. While it is kind of late in the calendar year I don't have to worry about uh, winter tires because I live in Florida, see it's all, all so pretty, but uh, we're going to give this guy a test. The temperature right now is about 77, a high of 82 today, so not much variance in temperature. Uh, you can see from the trees across the street, virtually no wind, just maybe a couple miles per hour. So we're going to give this a test and then uh, change out the wheels and tires and see if we get uh, any improvement. Just wanted to show you a quick video of the dash before we get started. As you can see, the battery is at 100%, and so when we get back, I'll charge it at 100%, and my home uh, charger will show me how many kilowatt hours we add back to the battery when the drive is done. We'll also be able to calculate the average miles uh, per kilowatt hour, and we're gonna drive at uh, traffic speeds. You'll notice in the top right, the estimated range 385. That's because for the last couple of weeks I've been driving in stop and go traffic. This test, however, will be highway speeds going with the flow of traffic. And, and uh, current temperature is 75. And I just did double check all of the tires and they are the original 20 inch tires that come uh, with the US limited edition um, car and uh, that pressure is all set to the manufacturer's recommended pressure as shown on the sticker inside the door panel. And so we're gonna start our drive. All right, I've now completed the first leg of the trip. Maybe take off two minutes for prep that I wasn't driving, so an hour and 11 minutes, almost 75 miles. The first two miles were surface streets, the last four miles were surface streets, but the rest of it was uh, on the highway at 65 or 70 miles an hour 70 percent of the battery left and now i'm going to stop and get something to eat oh let's see the temperature is now 82. we did have the air conditioning running at 74 degrees with a fan speed of four uh, i like a little bit more air moving than the auto does so maybe that uh, wasted some electricity but doesn't really matter because it's all going to be relevant and of course on this trip, it's 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. And this is the original 20 inch tires. And you can see in the bottom right, they have 15,400 miles on them. I don't know if that hurts their range much, but uh, you know, everything is a potential factor. Now at the beach, uh, the wind is still quite low. And if there was a change in elevation, uh, possibly uh, a decrease of about 100 feet. So I don't think that's going to be a material factor in my drive here in Florida. I thought maybe instead of constantly watching someone drive in a car, you might want just a few seconds of serenity and waves at the beach. Enjoy. All right, time to start our next leg of the trip. Had our uh, lovely breakfast by the beach. Who says a road test can't be a little bit fun? Next, we're going to uh, do another leg, like I said, and then uh, a quick stop to do some errands, and then we'll finish our highway driving back to our starting point and charge the car and see how much energy it, it actually took. Okay, just finished our second leg. Just wanted to track the uh, miles and the time. 3.3 miles per kilowatt on this little trip, but we had a little more traffic and a couple of extra miles on side roads. 
and we're gonna go do our shopping errand here and we'll get on with the rest of our trip. All right, we have arrived safely back at the house. We used about 30% battery on the way out and about 30% on the way back. So the battery is now at 40%. Uh, this third segment, of course, was 53 miles uh, in about uh, 54 minutes. A little bit of traffic resulted in a teeny bit slower speed uh, and just the way the road worked. And I think I ended up getting a little bit of a tailwind. Uh, the wind is now blowing favorably in the direction I was returning home, about 10 to 15 miles an hour with the occasional wind gust of 20 to 25 miles per hour. So wasn't expecting that. Uh, and that might be a large part of why the miles per kilowatt hour is 3.4, but the uh, the going outbound was closer to 3.1. So we're gonna plug the car in and see exactly how many kilowatt hour is added to the battery and also how many kilowatt hour goes through the charger and see what our loss is and how much we used on this trip. So now I'm at Discount Tire and they are in the process of replacing the old wheel tire combo with the new wheel tire combo. And I uh, just did the weights and I'll put those on the screen here in a second. But it looks like I'm gonna save not quite 20 pounds. I was really hoping for 22 or 23 pound difference, but uh, around 20 pounds. 61.9. Excellent, thank you so much. The people at Discount Tire were kind enough to allow me to make little video clips on uh, the weight of the tires. I bought my own bathroom scale, almost 20 pounds less per wheel, per corner. So we're hoping that that's going to help increase the range. I probably could have shopped and gotten tires that had a lower rolling resistance, but this time I was just going for weight and I wanted to see what the, the effect of weight is. The original tires might have been heavier brand new because they would have had more tread on them. Uh, apparently they wear pretty fast, at least the original tires. The new tires are supposed to be 55,000 miles. I did buy them on TireRack.com and I was doing that because I was fantasizing they would show up to my house and just put them on here in my driveway. But at the very last minute when we're done, they said, do you want them shipped to your house <laughs> or we can ship them the discount tire where they'll put them on for a small fee. And I was like, Oh, well, it turns out a Discount Tire bought Tire Rack. So if you're shopping on Tire Rack or Discount Tire, it's the same company, just the way of the world today, I guess. So they delivered them to Discount Tire. You saw the picture of them stacked up there in the garage. They put them on. And the only hiccup, and this is a problem still several days later, uh, the tire pressure gauges don't work. So I don't know if they're not in the tire or if Discount Tire couldn't sync with them, they're gonna talk back and forth, Discount Tire and Tire Rack, and hopefully come up with a solution. And I'll give you an update on that on the podcast if uh, if something comes up. But uh, that's the process for getting the new tires on. And now we have to do part two of the test, a, a second drive on the exact same course. It is time for the second half of our test we did the test with the old tires the 30 and 20 inch wheels and now I have these bad boys here these 18 inch wheels uh, continental tires pro contact GX they're not specifically EV tires but they are used by some EV companies to put on their tires on their cars uh, OEM tires so they're rated for it and we'll see what's gonna happen we're gonna do the same course I did with the other wheels and tires and see if there's any improvement and uh, wind check today the very little to no wind at least starting out here in the Orlando area um, oh uh, a lot of people had asked me already about costs and so 
one of the nice things is these tires are about $150 less per corner than the uh, low sidewall tires. So it's about $600 less to buy these tires. The wheels slash rims were about $1,100. So if you are in need of a set of tires, you can save $600 on the tires and pay $1,100 for the new wheels and so you're only out 500 bucks net uh, because of the discount on the tires. So the next tire change that you do would cover the buying the wheels alone. We have driven it some for a couple of days to make sure it's broke in. I just did the pressure checks to make sure all the, type of the tire pressures are at recommended settings. And uh, I think we're gonna go and we'll find out if we get any uh, improvement in miles per kilowatt hour. All right, just like the first part of the experiment, this is the second part, the first leg. Uh, we have arrived with 74% battery, not 70% battery, a difference of four out of the 30. Our average miles per kilowatt hour is 3.5. If I remember correctly, last time it was 3.1 for this part of the journey. The temperature is 75. The last one I think was 82 or something, I'll have to double check. But uh, clearly used less energy. And after the complete drive, I'll be able to give a more precise calculation. Um, oh, and today we had considerably more wind. So uh, it was 10 to 20 miles per hour didn't really affect most of the drive, but at the beginning and the end, we were driving right into the wind. So a little bit lower temperature, uh, noticeably higher uh, wind and some rain. And we're gonna go eat breakfast now and come back and do some more driving. This is a photo of the beach after we finished lunch. And if you notice the flag uh, is pointing to the north. I don't know what the wind speed here was, but. It was pretty strong, so probably 20 plus. And for the first couple miles, we were driving west and probably didn't have too much effect. But then almost all of the next 20 something miles were driving south into a 20 mile per hour headwind. Ended up being about the same time down to the minute uh, for the first, second, and third legs, which is good because that's what I was trying to do. So the speed wasn't different, but the second leg driving into a pretty high headwind ended up with the result of a 3.7 versus the 3.3 from the week before from part one. So considerably better fuel efficiency, energy efficiency, even with the high wind, the speed didn't change. I don't think the rain would affect it, uh, but I do want to point out that the temperature when we departed on the second leg was about 10 degrees cooler than the week earlier. I was hoping since I'm in Florida, it's going to be about the same and it's 10 degrees. It's not a huge difference, but a little bit lower temperature probably meant the air conditioner ran less, but because it was raining, the humidifier or dehumidifier probably ran more. The speed was the same. So I think the bulk of anything was the headwind, which probably wasn't even as bad as it could have been because once we drove a few miles inland, it was slightly lower, but you know, these are variables I was hoping to avoid, but you know, this is what actually happened. All right, here we are at our quick stop on the drive back to do some shopping errands. And we're gonna kind of hang out here, same amount of time as last time to, to again, try to recreate the path. The average on this leg was 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, but I had a pretty good headwind so it should have been lower, but my speed was considerably slower because there was traffic and pretty good rain. So the 22.6 miles took 30 minutes. I don't remember how long this portion took on the last trip. I'll have to look at that video when I put this together and maybe I'll add a little comment. Uh, battery is now 66%. Temperature is 75, almost 10 degrees lower than uh, the last trip. I really expected this weather to be pretty much the exact same, and it is not. So we have quite a few confounding variables, and we'll find out uh, if this is going to be of any value or not. But, you know, 
This is the data that I am collecting. Just a little correction from that last sound bite. I thought I had driven slower, but as I said in the uh, section right before that last recording, it turned out it was 30 minutes in both cases. Test one, test two were both 30 minutes to drive the exact same distance. So I did not drive slower. The, the driving speed was the same on all three legs within one minute. So that's not a problem. Matter of fact, the average driving speed of the first trip was 57.7 and the average driving speed on the second trip was 58.4. And like I said, very early on, I was trying to do match the speed of the traffic and you know, trying to keep the speed the exact same on each leg of the road. And I think I achieved that. The time variance was about two minutes quicker on the second drive. So a little bit faster speed, a teeny bit faster speed, which could have negatively affected the, uh, the range on the second trip, but not by much. And the times were the same, the weather conditions, really, I think the two big factors, I had a southbound or when I was driving southbound on the return trip, I had a headwind. And then on the third the, or the final leg, when I'm driving back towards Orlando, I'm going west. On the first day, I had a tailwind. On the second trip, I did not. So the wind was a negative effect on the second and third leg. If I use just the data from the screens in the car, it looks like I got about 9% more range or not more range that used 9% less energy, 9% more efficient. When I looked at the battery info, the final battery numbers that suggested 11% better. And I also tracked the amount of kilowatt hours added back into the car. And the first trip used 11% more electricity also to put back into the car. So I'm going to call this under these conditions, an 11% improvement. I can go 11% farther in the car. This is a 2023 limited in the United States EPA rating of 306 miles. 11% more would be 340 miles. The actual EPA for the base model with the bigger battery is 361. So I think I've accounted for the bulk of that. I don't know if I had lower rolling resistance tires, if I could do a teeny bit better, but I'm not going to drop another $800 plus on a set of tires. So the nice thing is 11%, maybe more if the winds were different, maybe I can uh, do the drive again at some time, recreate the 18 inch wheel drive and see if I get a, a better superior number without wind. Cause I think maybe it's really closer to 14 to 15% better but I don't have that number. I have 11% better. So there you go. Switching out from the stock uh, wheel tire combo to the new 18 inch wheel with the higher sidewall tires, almost 20 pounds less per wheel per corner and an 11% or greater, I guess, 11% or greater range improvement. So if that really matters to you on highway driving, and this is something you could consider doing Maybe not right now, but the next time you need tires because the tires with a higher sidewall are more affordable and it will reduce the cost of the wheels that you're putting on by quite a bit. So hopefully that helps somebody. And once again, thank you for watching the, the Phil Ferguson show. And if you like the channel, please subscribe, follow, do all the things, share with your friends, share with people in the EV community because it's all about uh, getting some better results.